hey, you, I need you to hit that subscribe button. Subscribe. Sis, what's your name? Aviana. <laughs> all praises, all praises. My wife named Aviana. Have you been taught the Ten Commandments? You've been taught the Ten Commandments, right? Excuse me, miss. Excuse me, ma'am. Have you been taught the Ten Commandments? Excuse me. Have y'all been taught the Ten Commandments? Your parents, your mama take you to church? You ain't never been to church? That's a good thing, though. That'd be a good thing. Listen up, family. Listen up. We out here for y'all. Who has been taught the Ten Commandments before in their life? You said you have. You said you have. What about my brothers and sisters right here? Have y'all been taught the Ten Commandments? The Ten Commandments says, Thou shalt not commit adultery. What is that? Thou shalt not commit fornication. What is that? Look around you. This is the spirit of adultery. When you come out here half naked, you come out in the spirit of fulfilling your lust. Out here in a sexual spirit. That's what thou shalt not commit adultery. Give me that. Thou shalt not commit adultery. A very simple law that saith the Lord. But we struggle with that thing as a people. We struggle with it. Why? Because the lust that's within us. What's your name, brother? Say it again. Erd. Bird. Adriel. And you said Aviana, right? Alright. Aviana and Bird. We're gonna read this. Exodus chapter 20, verse 14. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Give me first Timothy 2 and 9. So the Lord told us, thou shalt not commit adultery. So Aviana, what is adultery? Cheating on your husband or wife. There you go. Cheating on your husband or wife. What about you, Bird? What else is adultery? Listen up, sisters. All right, read this for me. I'm going to show you a law that goes into committing adultery. Like she said, cheating on your spouse. If you marry, you cheating on your husband, you cheating on your wife, that's adultery. But adultery is like an umbrella. It has many laws underneath it, right? And one of those laws is fornication. Listen up, sisters. The book of 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. That women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Bird, what is modest apparel? Say it again. Right, things that you, okay, there's things that you're not supposed to wear. Sisters, what is modest apparel? Sisters don't want to answer that thing. Why? Because they're dressing in modest apparel. Modest apparel will make sure that we, all these men, cannot see your figure. I shouldn't better see your ass when you come out the house. Only your husband should better see that. Right. You got your daughter out here half naked. And what, what is not supposed to happen to her? You don't want her to be a baby mama. You don't want her to be a teenage mom. But then, right, you don't want her to be raped. But then what do you do? You prostitute your daughter by allowing her to come out here half naked. Then guess what? You come out here half naked and you show her that example. You let her know it's okay. But guess what? Her mama is a baby mama. What's she gonna turn out to be? If all you taught her was to be a baby mama, how can you expect your daughter to grow up to become a wife? So if you are a baby mama, more than likely your daughter will, become, will grow up to become a baby mother because the example you have set for her was only to be a baby mother, a baby mama, right? You got what I want? Okay. Well, go ahead and get me um, Proverbs um, for 30. The uh, land falling to order. Uh, Prostitute not that bad. I guess it's the law. Yeah, go ahead and give me that. Because that'll keep it simple for the family. That'll keep it simple for our family, our brothers and sisters out here, all right? So we're going to get another law that pertains to the law of adultery. Thou shalt not commit adultery, right? Brother, you look familiar too. Go ahead and read. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 29. Do not prostitute thy daughter. What it say? Do not prostitute thy daughter. You may say, I'm not prostituting my daughter. I ain't making her go out and sell something. She ain't making no money for me. But if you allow your daughter to come out the house half naked, guess what you're doing? You're prostituting your daughter. Right. If you allow your daughter to go to prom, guess what you're doing? You're prostituting your daughter. Who don't know what happened on prom night? Who don't know? Which one of us haven't lived through prom night? Right? But then you allow your daughter to dress up in an immodest dress and then go to prom night and expect everything to be okay. Everything to be peachy cream. No, you're going to come home and find out you're a grandparent now. Why? Because you allowed your daughter to step out the house 
and modest. You told her that's okay, right? Go ahead and give me uh, Surah 42, verse nine. All right. Go ahead and give me that. Because we as a people struggle with, thou shalt not commit adultery. And in that struggling, we struggle with the laws of attire, where it tells our women to not dress immodestly, right? You should be dressing modestly. You should be dressing like a princess, like royalty. We say we're the kings and queens on the earth, but then we looking like some strippers. We looking like hoes. We looking like coxmen. But it's all out here just trying to bust a nut. That's all they out here for. They're not trying to build a righteous community. They're not trying to become a husband, a father. Come on. They out here to get them draws and keep it moving. Mm -hmm. Read. Sirach chapter 42 and verse 7. Excuse me, you want to nod or say Oh, uh, go ahead, sorry. Sir. Verse 7. Deliver all things in number and weight. Well, go ahead, jump down to verse uh, 8. Four. Nah, you want to nod. Verse 9. The father waking for the daughter. When no man know. So I said the father waking for the daughter when no man know her, right? It's hard for you to, okay, even if you uh, you marry, right? If you do it righteously, you'll be waking up throughout the middle of the night. You'll be waking up or you'll be having a thought process throughout the day, is my daughter all right? Say you send your daughter off to public schools. In your mind, you're like, damn, I hope she all right. I know how I used to be when I was up in school. Hope these young boys ain't trying to do nothing with my daughter, right? That should be a process because you taught her the laws of God. You saw her, hey, don't be doing this, don't be doing that. But when you ain't got eyes on her, now she in your mind, I hope she all right, right? I know she going to school, I know she doing this, or I know she leaving my house, she 18 now. For this world, I know she 20. For this world, for the mindset, now she left your house, she left your care, right? Read. And the care for her take away sleep. It said the care for your daughter should take away sleep. That's a father that truly cares for his daughter. A man that cares for his daughter would not allow her to wear anything she wants to wear. Right. He would not allow her to wear tight pants, booty shorts, tight dress sundresses. No, you will cover up. You will be beautifully covered up. That's what a righteous father will do for his daughter. Read. When she is young, lest she pass away the flower of her age, uh -huh. and being married, lest she should be hated. So whether you're young and now you we find out you done lost your virginity. We find out you 16, what is it, 16 and pregnant. You 17 year old and pregnant. Or now you get married and you plan the whore. You commit adultery against your husband. Those are all things a father must consider for his daughter. When he doesn't raise her up properly, that's what he must consider. When he is raising her up properly, those are things he must consider. Otherwise, his daughter will bring shame. Brothers and sisters, we must wake up to God's commandments. Otherwise, we're going to keep being baby mamas. We're going to keep being baby daddies. We're going to keep being on child support. That's hatred, thus saith the Lord. Read. Verse 10. In our virginity, lest she should be defiled, and God with child in her father's house. Gotten with child in her father's house. And most of us, our father is not in our lives. So guess what? Your daughter gotten with child in her mama's house. Now you got all these women and children, and where's the man? Where's that father figure? Where's that husband? Where's that rock? Where's that pillar for the community? He's not there. Why is that? Why is not the black man in the home today? Why is that? Go ahead, give me Deuteronomy 28. It's a curse. Go ahead, give me 15. It's a curse, so-called black men and women, so-called Hispanic men and women. That's a curse of God that you grew up without a father. That's a curse of God. But it's normal in our communities. Like, who your daddy? I don't know. You ever meet your father? Nah, I ain't never seen him. My mama told me he was a no good nigga. That's how most of us live our lives. That's not normal. How don't you know your own father? Right. That's not normal. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments, and his statutes which I command thee this day, uh -huh. that all these curses shall come upon thee. All these curses shall come upon thee and do what? And overtake thee. We have been overtaken, but not keeping. Thou shalt not commit adultery. A baby daddy and baby mama is a result of you committing adultery, right. of you committing fornication. Now you're growing up without a father. Now these young boys turn into the streets. Now they never, they was never taught how to become that righteous man how to become that righteous husband, then how to become that righteous father. There's an order, thus saith the Lord. Give me 1 Timothy 5 and 14. 
There's an order, brothers and sisters, that saith the Lord. You can't just, how you, how you sleeping with a woman, get her pregnant, have a baby, and then get married 10 years later. That's out of order, that saith the Lord. You must first get to know and prove a friend. Then you get married, then you have sex, and then you have children. That's what you do. That's godliness. Read. First Timothy chapter 5, verse 14. I will therefore that the younger women, excuse me, read it again. Verse 14, I will therefore that the younger women marry. That the younger women do what? Women marry. That the younger women marry. I thought they can just be out here twerking. That the younger women marry. They only thought thought. Marry. They out here just living it up. The younger women marry. The Lord said that he would have the younger women to be married. Read. Bear children. Then bear children. Read. Guide the house. And then learn how to guide the house. Read. Give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. Read that last part again. Give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. Our adversaries is everybody that's not on this sign right here. So you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Our adversaries are all these other nations. The so-called white man, the so-called Chinese man, the so-called Arabian man, the so-called East Indian man. All of those are our adversaries. Why? Because they all had a hand in our destruction. They have all taken a piece of that slavery pie. Hey, listen up, family. Hey, hey, there you go. Listen up, listen up. Read that again. Verse 14, I will therefore that the younger women marry, bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. The Bible say that he will, that the Lord will have you young women to marry while you're young. Why? So you don't grow up to be an old baby mama, an old dog mom. You got, you will be 30 years old dying alone. Right. That's what, that's what happens to most of our women. They become old, bitter, black women. Most of our mothers are old, bitter, black women. That's a curse that we read in Deuteronomy 28, 15. That's a curse. You're supposed to get married when you're young, then grow old, age together. Thus saith the Lord. Read. Verse 15. For some are already turned aside after Satan. And we see that today, right around us in Buck Road Beach. Our people are turned around to Satan, to idolatry, to the, you can be whatever you want to be. You can live your best life. Go ahead, jump back to Deuteronomy 28. Because we, that's going to be the bread and butter for our people. Because our people, we hate God's commandments. And thou shalt not commit adultery. The effects of that is evident before me. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are how our men repented at heart The scriptures is proof IUIC, we deliver the truth